We're here at the Qualcomm booth, and who are you? I'm Matt Branda, Director of Technical Marketing at Qualcomm Technologies. And who are you? I'm Giri Sir, uh, an engineer from Modem System Testing in Qualcomm. So this is uh, crazy right here. You're talking about Gigabit LTE. Gigabit. Yeah, we're actually yeah. talking about achieving gigabit speeds over an LTE network. How does that work? Yeah, so um, we can do it in two different ways, uh, using the licensed or the unlicensed spectrum. Um, so in the licensed spectrum, what we have is a 3CA connection with uh, 4x4 MIMO on two of the carriers and 2x2 MIMO on one of the carriers, which gives you up to one gigabit per second. We also use the 256 QAM modulation, which enables us to have higher throughput speeds. And here what we have is the uh, license assisted access, which uses the primary carrier on a licensed carrier and the secondary cells on the unlicensed carrier, which share space with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and other technologies to achieve gigabit speeds. So you're going to have about 70% of the operators being able to do one gigabit speeds in the future. 70%. So this is not just for some places, no, not no. just for Korea or some strange place, no, but no. Is the, they will be everywhere? It's global. Yeah, that's what this is about, globalizing gigabit LTE. What is it going to change uh, for everybody? Is it going to mean faster mobiles? What it's it going to be faster mobile experience. It's going to enable more virtual experience. We're showcasing over here streaming 360 video over so, a gigabit LTE. Uh, sorry, can I jump in here? So, this is a 360, 4K, 60 frames per second, right? Correct, correct. So this is all over a gigabit LTE link, and that's what makes it possible, is when you have fast connectivity, you can actually achieve these type of high-definition videos and with the capacity to support these types of applications. So here, I'm uh, just scrolling around. It's doing a live, uh, uh, live from, from this one. Yeah, so this one is a reference yeah. yeah. to capture uh, one of these videos. Yeah, so this one is a reference device, uh, which is probably similar to the device that was used to capture these videos. And this one is doing a live demo right right now as we speak. It's capturing the video around us and stitching them real time on the 835 processor. So it's stitching in real time, it doesn't overheat? It doesn't. You can probably try one of the devices. We've been running for hours. So who are you? Huh? My name is Reed Westberg. I'm in the multimedia R&D team, uh, responsible for the application that's running right now. So again, um, all of the, uh, this video is being streamed to these six devices. And uh, it, right over here, you can see the feed from the video is actually each fisheye is being stream, fisheye stream is being sent to each device and in real time being stitched on the GPU. Uh, so this so is GPU, CPU, which part is, is mostly the, G, the graphics uh, processing unit? The yes. gra Adreno 540, right? Um, I'm not sure yeah. the number, but yes, it's one and of the uh, real time 4K 60. That's the only one that can do it. That's right. Uh, again, this is pre-recorded content, but it's being streamed over that one gigabit connection right now. That's awesome. It's great. That's cool. And, uh, another thing, very important, is not only is the video captured in uh, you know 360 degree, but the audio is captured as well. So this so, is like a special. That's all right. So this is a, a, a special prototype camera uh, that Qualcomm developed, and uh, it, it 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 is an example of how to capture spherical. Um, audio. So if you notice, as I rotate this screen, the audio actually rotates in this 7.1 system as well. That's so cool. That's awesome. Thanks a lot. Cool. And uh, you also talking about 5G LTE. What is, how does 5G work? So 5G is a new standard, so we're pushing beyond gigabit LTE and starting to enable new types of things with the 5G new radio. So with 5G, we're not only talking about uh, faster peak rates, but we're also talking about faster uniform rates. So no matter where you are in the cell, indoor, outdoor, far from the cell, near to the cell, you're going to get those very fast data rates that enable the types of experiences that we were seeing over there, like streaming 360 video. What does other, NR mean? NR means new radio. That's the new standard. So when you think about 4G LTE, with 5G we have 5G NR, and that's the new standard that's being developed to meet some of these extreme requirements that we're starting to see over the next decade and beyond.
That's crazy, no? So uh, you're already talking about Gigabit, which sounds awesome. How is uh, 5G even better than Gigabit? <laughs> so beyond Gigabit, we're also we're talking, again, it's not just about peak rates with 5G, but how do we deliver uniform rates to a user no matter where they are in the, uh, where they are in the cell? So that when you're in an environment like CES and you're walking around and data rates become very crunched, you can actually achieve those speeds. But beyond just speeds, we're talking about very low latencies. So if you think about an application like virtual reality or augmented reality, where things need to be happening in real time, we're going to deliver that on a 5G network in sub 10 millisecond type latencies over a 5G network. Um, so it's basically fiber without cable. Exactly. So that's what some of the operators are talking about, is actually replacing fiber with a 5G network. Uh, so that you're getting uh, you know, a wireless connection that's basically like a wire. But that's sad for the cable manufacturers, mm -hmm. no? No, I mean, I think it opens up new opportunities for the entire, when you think about what it takes to actually deliver uh, broadband to uh, or, you know, fast gigabit speeds to every home, that's not a reality today, so that's going to open up new opportunities for the entire industry. But uh, isn't there still a limit? You can't just like have a million people in the state, or not a hundred thousand people in the stadium, everybody getting a fiber over the air. Yeah, there, sure. There's a limit, right? There's always a limit, but what, with 5G, what we're doing is starting to access some of these higher spectrum bands. With LTE, we're primarily operating in the sub-3 gigahertz bands. With 5G, we're actually going to access bands in the 3 to 6 gigahertz, and also even bands up in 28 gigahertz, 39 gigahertz. And if you go up in these upper bands, you get very wide bandwidths. That's capable to support an environment like CES. But the uh, European Union wants to use 700 megahertz uh, old TV spectrum for the 5G. G, right? Yeah, and so that, that has long range. That so, goes through the walls. Yeah, so 5G is going to be, with 5G, we're, our goal is a unified design across all different spectrum bands. We're talking about low bands, sub 1 gigahertz, so like 700 megahertz, bands from 1 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz, and then those upper bands above 24 gigahertz. And one smartphone, a little baseband in the smartphone is going to support all that. Correct. With some of the advanced technologies we're having, we're now able to support many more bands with the RF front end that we have in our smartphone devices. And this is Qualcomm's, uh, uh, what's called, uh, expertise, is this, this kind of stuff. Absolutely. This is what Qualcomm excels at. The complexity that you have in supporting all these different bands and all these different technologies in a form factor that fits in your pocket and it's low power. And uh, nobody else is able to match what you do, right? No, Qualcomm, just as we led the world to 3G and 4G, we expect to lead the world to 5G. But it's still a collaboration system. You can't just make a standard by yourself. Absolutely. We're collaborating with the industry to develop this new standard within the 3GPP standards body. And then we're working with the vendors like Ericsson. We just recently announced our trial with Ericsson and AT&T to start testing these technologies in a real network. Is the 835 going to support 5G or that's too soon? That's too soon. 835 is supporting our gigabit LTE. That Which is quite good. Is. Yes. Yeah. But then uh, the, maybe the next one. Maybe the next one. All right. Let's, can we walk around the booth a little bit? Sure. Uh, can you talk about this VR demo? Or, sure, sure. Um, oh, there's a... Uh, so virtual reality experience. You're the Qualcomm CES... So what are they experiencing right here? Yeah, so this is a virtual reality. This is actually what won best in CES virtual reality for 2017. And the reason it's so special is you get, you're, it's delivering actually six degrees of freedom. So today in most virtual reality experiences, you're getting three degrees of freedom. So you're standing still and you're looking around and you're, it's as you're there, but with six degrees of freedom, you can actually start walking around like you're in the actual environment. And that's what we're showcasing with with these uh, virtual reality demo that we How, have here. So that means you are combining Project Tango kind of uh, stuff? You have cameras and, uh, that knows the, the surrounding? Correct. So if it actually has cameras that are looking at your surrounding, there's the virtual reality glasses that you see here. So what are we yes, looking yeah. at here? This is the actual virtual uh, reality headset based on our Snapdragon 835. So there's a, a IR sensor, extra stuff? You want, you want me to open it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. go ahead. So this is just our reference device, like a yeah. it's like a engineering build, okay? So right here you have a, a very high resolution display. Yes, it's a 2K display. 2K display. 2K, so 2580 by 1440. And what are, what are the cameras in the back? Um, this one's the depth camera. That one's probably the regular camera. That looks like a flash. That's probably a light sensor. I don't know what that is. So it's not Project Tango, but is it similar? Yeah. 
So it's uh, how is it different from Project Tango? Don't know. I don't have to know. I don't know enough about Project Tango. All right, let's walk around a little bit. Sure. Look out for that. So it's is it the coolest uh, VR demo in the world? Yeah, we won best in CES 2017. Yeah. Cool. And again, the, the the real differentiator here is giving that six degrees of freedom, which hasn't yeah. been possible before in virtual reality. Uh, sure. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. And uh, what what do you have? The Power Ranger. You have Power Rangers. Is Power Rangers part of the staff or? Yeah, Power Rangers is. Uh, we partnered with uh, Power Rangers to deliver this experience is actually oh, nice. what those uh, what those people are experiencing is a virtual world uh, that's uh, included the Power Rangers. Nice. Hi. Hey. So um, uh, you have HDR10 demo. Hey, can you talk about this? Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, what we're demoing right now is um, HDR10 is uh, the new standard. And so we're just showing you a side-by-side -side comparison of the two on the big screen. But what we're really showing is that our Snapdragon 835 processor is going to be the first to bring HDR10 to your mobile device. So it does, which, which one is the HDR10? That one there. The right side. So it can uh, support playback of HDR10? Uh, yes. Now, Output also. Yes, um, for optimal, performance, obviously you want a display that is going to be able to handle HDR. Is, uh, are smartphones displays able to do that? Um, they will be able to do that. We're going to um, release a list of them um, later on this year. It needs super high brightness LCD, right? Or OLED. It needs very... Uh, but otherwise, there could be some other tricks on the LCD, or the, but then you just connect external yes, HDR yes. display. But you don't necessarily have to, but for the most optimal you know, quality, you do want your... Is that 4K 60? 4K. So that's HDMI 2.1 output. Yep. It's super high, 2.1A uh, or something like that. All right, cool. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thanks. And you have some more demos over there? Sure. Uh, this is actually Project Tango right here. How is it, how's it using Project Tango? Is it Project Tango? Project Tango is right over here. Right over here. Hey, can I check it out? Yeah. I'm actually right. demoing it if you yeah. like. Yeah, can you jump in? Yeah. So this is actually in the market, right? Sorry? This is on the market. This yeah, one. this is the uh, factory flow. So, now let's say, for example, you're in the market to buy a TV for your wall. I'm not sure if your wall is big enough for a 75 inch TV. So you can launch Amazon. Yeah, so they have they made an app just for Tango. Nice. Okay, great. So then let's pick like a 75 inch TV. 65 inch? 75 inch. 75. Whoa. So, stays there. Aye, that's cool. What happens if you walk like a Yeah, you can bit. walk. It, it just stays, knows. It stays right there. It knows the can exact I, size yeah. of the wall. That's mind blowing, no? Oh, that's cool. You can go behind the TV and check the ports. <laughs> That's awesome. This is one example. I can see it. Today. I can get Sorry? It. How do you see the size of it? Sorry, the, you can, you can see the, the actual size. The actual size of the TV. It knows the size of the wall. You know the size of the wall. So, oh, let me so you can place the TV on the wall. Okay. You can place the TV on the wall, and you can imagine how the, or the wall would look. With you can do it on the floor also. Okay. Yeah, well, you, you can you buy, else? Uh, this particular app only does TVs. But let me show you another example. Let's okay. say you're buying furniture, right, for this space. So. Does IKEA do an app? Uh, Lowe's does an app and Wayfair has an app. I don't know if IKEA has an app here. So, so here, let me let's put a stool right here. Can I try? Sorry? Can I try? Yeah, um, okay. yeah choose, choose one. Yeah, one. You can choose. Yeah, okay. Uh, where do I put it? Here? Can, I, can I hold it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So please, please, can you click somewhere on the floor? Oh, nice. Now, just once you click somewhere else in the Now we can walk around it. Oh, that's cool. I'm oh, sorry. That's beautiful. Move around uh, with me. Yeah. I'm losing it. That's so awesome. That's great. How much is this phone? It's not even uh, expensive. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. You get Project Tango. That's awesome. And which is the chipset? Uh, it's a six fifty two. It's got a Snapdragon six fifty two. No, not big. The whole like you can do this. 
you, there's no because if, right. if it's real furniture, you can't zoom in on real furniture. You look at it just like I would look at real furniture. Yeah. And what's the frame rate? Is sixty? No, this is running at thirty, I believe. Thirty. Can, 30. can you see the cameras? Uh, what are the cameras here that makes this possible? So yeah, I can show you the cameras. So it's got the fish eye. It's got a depth camera. This one's a regular camera in the back. That's and so this cool. Is, and this is, a, this is a, a flash. That's the feature of Android, right? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. That's cool. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks. So uh, that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's so cool. Here's uh, basically you're doing the same thing that my camera is doing, like a shotgun mic. Hi. Similar. Hi. Very similar to that. Hi. My name's Chandra Dyke, and we're showing here our audio zoom feature. Basic idea here is you can create these customizable listening zones where you're only going to hear sound coming from these directions. So let's say you want to record your soccer game. You just want to hear the action on the field. You want to hear all of the parents chatting around you. So let you do that. There's no special. It's noise canceling the rest, right? Yes. And again, it's different than say like a boom mic on your uh, camera where you have to aim it. This is kind of getting sound in all directions at all times, letting you through software and algorithms decide what sound you want to come into the system. It has multiple microphones, right? It's, it's got three microphones. That's so the standard. Right? Yeah, pretty standard. Yep, it does. Is it does. standard today? Uh, there are, like we have launched this on a couple of phones. I believe like the LG uh, V20, which just launched, uses this feature. Um, again, no, all the processing is being done on our DSP, so it's super low power. Uh, we can also do things like, since we know the direction of sound, we can do surround sound recording. So because you know the direction of sound, now you can get a full 5.1 surround sound mix with your videos as well, rather than the mono or stereo you're limited to today. Nice. That's awesome yep. because uh, smartphones uh, record very nice video, but sometimes the sound is a little right. bit uh, and, and for immersion, too noisy uh, or something. Audio is just as important, you know, from a Qualcomm you standpoint to immersion. sound, especially yep. in a noisy place like here. And we can do other interesting stuff like voice biometrics as well. With our Sense ID voice technology, we can look at unique characteristics of your voice so it only responds to you and nobody else. Whoa. We can even tell the difference between uh, recordings of your voice and your actual voice as well. So it's very difficult to That's fool. Amazing. So you can actually, uh, like, you push on the face of somebody. It could maybe even uh, only record the sound from that person because it can yeah. sync, it can reprise, and just only record that person. Exactly. Everybody else is muted Yeah, exactly. Out. And you can also combine it with things like object tracking or face tracking, so it automatically steers the beam as well. So a lot of applications to this, and this is technology we're putting into automotive, IoT devices, pretty much anything that has voice input. What are we looking at over there? So here we see. Uh, Hey, that's yeah. me. All right. Yeah. So what I've got here is stand, uh, just right there. stand yeah. over here. Yeah. So what I'm showing here is the uh, the capabilities of the Snapdragon 835 processor and being able to run deep neural networks on device, no connection to the cloud needed. Yeah. So what you see here is a multi-object detector. It's yeah. picking up a variety of different objects in the field of view. It's a little bit quiet today. Well, maybe some more people will walk through. But the idea is that it's able to either pick the CPU, the GPU, or the DSP to be able to run the algorithm depending on the power and performance profile of the user experience so that you're trying to create. So that's computer vision. It's, it's computer vision, but it's more than computer vision. It's actually computer vision. It can be applied to audio use cases like natural language processing and translation, uh, keyword detection, and a variety of other data uses. So I'd, I'd say computer vision that you see here in this demo is a very demonstrable use case. But the, the opportunities and the, 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 the possibilities are literally endless when you're applying neural network algorithms to problems that are on the handset or in the smart, in, um, um, uh, man, no, sorry about that. Um, security cameras, drones, personal speakers. So the 835 has neural network on the chip? It actually has the capability of processing neural network algorithms, yes. So it's, it's been optimized for machine learning. So is it that you can't do this stuff on the previous chip? You could, but the performance is incredibly uh, better. Plus you have the ability to do this on our hexagon wide vector extensions, our DSP. So you can get really fine precision. Um, we've supported CAFE in our prior version. Now we're supporting TensorFlow. So you have options to choose from as it relates to the kind of framework that you want to be able to um, train your model in. Uh, we support uh, convolutional neural networks. Uh, recurrent neural networks, LSTMs, so it's pretty versatile. And it gives OEMs the ability to take their own trained neural net models, drop them into Snapdragon, and go. No muss, no fuss. Does that mean uh, we get something like uh, even better than the Intel RealSense in the phone? Uh, I don't have anything that I compare to from a benchmark standpoint. Or Movidius? What I can say is that you have a variety of options to choose from with the three different cores we have, with the CPU, our Adreno GPU, and our Hexagon DSP, something that is unmatched in the industry from an SOC standpoint. 
and it's just doing that for basic camera. Right. It's just not a uh, special camera. No right. special camera. It's using the camera that's on the device. No, uh, no, no special hardware needed. That's awesome. Let me jump in over there. Yep. There's another demo over there. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Hey. So here we have. Uh, this is uh, stabilization. It's. Hi. Hi. So uh, how does this work? So this is the electronic image stabilization 3.0, running on our latest Snapdragon 835 processor. So it's super stable even though it's shaking. Right. We're shaking the, the display here at about 3 hertz frequency. And it's not optical. It's, it's digital. not optical. It's digital, yes. So it has more resolution in the video and it crops it out a little bit? Right, crops it a little bit, correct. But it's still a 4K uh, recording? Yeah, exactly. So that means the camera is recording more than 4K? Yeah, well, it has to, right? A little bit. A little bit more, not 6K or 8K or something. Exactly. Maybe that's the next model. <laughs> Hopefully. That's awesome. Is this something that ships already on other phones? Or? Yeah, so EIS has been available in 1.0 and 2.0 and some of our earlier processors as well, 820, 3.0 .0 is just our latest version of EIS on the 835 that we're demoing here. It basically pulls information from the gyroscope and runs that information across some of the subsystems on the processor, like the DSP, the ISP, and the GPU, to correct for the shake. So it takes some of that shake out of it. And it's real time. Uh, yeah. it's a I real mean, time. there has to be a lag. There's a little bit of a delay, right? And like these the are microseconds or something. It, it'll vary. And these are obviously these are just our production prototype devices. There's there's a little bit of the, of, of a delay as it processes the signal. Sure. This is awesome to yeah. be able to have a stable video. How, how much better is it compared to the previous versions you had? Um, it, it's it's a little bit better. It, it's hard to kind of judge that you know visually without having a side by side. But this is the latest version, 3.0, and the algorithms, right? The technologies are always getting better, and we're running it on a more efficient, smaller, and faster processor. So you'll see some improvements if we had a side by side. Uh, is it okay to combine optical and digital image stabilization, or is yeah. it you have to choose? Well, I'm, you know, I think in most cases we we make it off, we make it available as EIS, and so that the OEMs that we work with have a choice, right? OIS is still a viable solution for. OEMs, but EIS being somewhat cheaper because it's not mechanical, it, it offers the ability for OEMs to offer EIS or stabilization, I should say, to a wider range of products in a wider price point, right? But if you have optical, yeah, it doesn't conflict with this technology. I'm not sure. I don't know that question. You know, I don't know if it conflicts. You know, I know that uh, we can support OIS as well. We're just showing an EIS solution here today. And does it uh, um, does it uh, compensate for some kind of uh, other kind of issues that could be with well, shaking? So what we're doing here right now is we're basically shaking it in one axis, but EIS does work in all three. So we're shaking it in this axis. It also works like this and for movement like this. So it's. It's like a pilot. It's called pitch, yaw, and roll. So it does correct for all that motion. Right? And it's something that the iPhone doesn't do. I don't know if the, you know. I don't know if the iPhone 6 in this case uh, has EIS or OIS. But I believe they have some type of stabilization. I'm not sure which one. All right, that's very cool. There's sure. lots of stuff in this chip. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a lot, right. of, a lot of stuff built in. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. So there it is. Uh, the Qualcomm booth here at uh, CES 2017, there was lots of demos, and um, there was the Power Rangers, there was a 360 4 k uh, 60p, there was uh, supposedly the best VR demo ever, I haven't tried it, and, uh, there's, a, and then there's also smartwatches, there's a router, There's more routers. There's a ring. Smart door openers. There's medical stuff. And uh, there's more smartwatches. More medical. And uh, some other IoT solutions right here. Uh, Real Sense competitor, maybe. And then we have the car, connected car. That was a pull.